crazy, Dwayne. Being alone will not make you go crazy. And you will not start talking to yourself. You're talking to yourself. No, you're not. Stop it. No, you stop it. Good morning, Marion. Ah, morning, Alex. What's a good word? Well, you know, I'm trying to record my podcast. Oh, good luck. It's loud in here, huh? Yeah. Oh, I can get detention for whatever I want. Mm-hmm. All right. Good day now. <sighs> oh, sweet Hawaii. Oh, my God! You're that reporter from Metro News One! Yes, I am! That story on the giant pizzas, huh? Oh, uh, one seats. moment, sir. <laughs> Those pizzas were real. Come on. The pizzas were real. Calzones. Trick photography. I knew it! Dragon bloods carry the fire of the dragon in their blood. Therefore, we make the best nights. Doesn't that also make us sweatier? Yes. Yes, it does. That's why I cram... <laughs> Towels in my pits. <laughs> Class dismissed. In fact, my students love me so much, they, they bought me a hot tub. Oh, my baby's got a hot tub. <laughs> Mom, you know I'd love to talk with you all night, but I'm getting a call on my second mirror. Hot tubs, mirrors, look at you, sir, big time. Sean. 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 You gotta cut me in on Listen, this. Listen, let this fool go. Don't do this. Calvester, shut up. Sean. <laughs> After all, we're brothers. Huh? Family. Bang! You're dead. Very stupid move, Drew. Let me in and close the door. Uh, woo! What? You look a snap, crackle, pop. In your soul, it only takes one bowl, Rice Krispies. It was fantastic. You made a 50-year-old jingle sound like a gold record. <laughs> I actually have a gold record. Do you want, you want to buy these tickets? Yeah, right. No, no, these are perfectly good. I just bought them. What am I, from Winnipeg? <laughs> I'm not, no, I... Racism doesn't strike people like you. No, uh-uh, no. It strikes people like you. <laughs> Welcome to Buzz Talk Live. For the past 25 years, my guest Kelly Perrine has been a, a staple in the film and television industry, acting and producing and writing. He's recognized from his early appearances on ER, Seinfeld, Met, Met About You, and had recurring character roles on The Drew Carey Show. Kelly's been a regular on sitcoms Between Brothers, The Parenthood, and One on One. He has also had a successful run on Nickelodeon's Night Squad, playing Sir Gareth, and starred in my network TV comedy, Under One Roof, where he played opposite the unmistakable Flavor Flav. Kelly's an actor with over 100 credited roles and winner of many festivals throughout the television and film industry. He keeps his passion for the craft front and center as he's one of the busiest actors in Hollywood. So let's chat it up tonight as Buzz Talk Live welcomes Kelly Perrine to the show. How you doing, Kelly? What, what, what? Buzz yeah. Talk Live in the huge. <laughs> What's up, Buzz Talk? What's up, Buzz Talk? What's up, Buzz Talk? Hey, everybody. How you doing tonight, Gio? All right, brother. How about yourself? Hey, you know what? I'm out here in California, dude. I am just hunkered down for the past four months. I get out to get eggs and cheese <laughs> and necessities and toilet paper. But you know what? I can't lie to you, man. I'm... Uh, you know, I'm doing all right. The, the weather's nice. I'm going to ride this out for as long as I can, and I'm keeping my spirits up. So, you know, all things considered, bro, I, I could be doing worse. So I'm yeah, not going to complain. No, we, we could all be doing worse, and uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll you know. start to get better, you know, as as uh, as the winter rolls on. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show and making time for me. And uh, so uh, are we in Hollywood tonight? Are we on the outskirts? Where are we? Well, you know what? I'm pretty. I'm pretty much in Hollywood. It, it's Los Angeles. It, it's you know, I'm in, I'm in the hills. So uh, if you ever hills. saw like the Hollywood sign, I'm a little east of the Hollywood sign. And the crazy thing about Los Angeles, it's it's so spread out. So if you've ever seen like a movie of Hollywood, 
uh, you know, and they do like the montage. So it's like, right, you, know, right. you know, the Greek theater, the Walk of Fame, and then there's a Hollywood sign. And then right. you like, you're down on Venice Beach and you're doing all that. And so whenever people come and visit me, they're like, hey man, I want to go to all these places. And I go, hey man, that'll take two <laughs> days. Because <laughs> those places are so far apart from each other. Right, uh, right, but pretty right. much I'm, 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 I'm a stone's throw from Paramount right now now and warner brothers and i can get down to Par you know uh, any so, of those uh, um, so i gotta ask i mean you get time for tour guiding too or, 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 <laughs> well you look look whenever, whenever whenever somebody does come to visit you know i i, I try to take them around i, I show them the sites i show them the hollywood yeah, sign i'll take them on a studio you. tour but it's cool it's fun oh, when man. when, the, when the, you know when the industry was open it was it was fun <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, one of the great things about this show is the chats and people, you know, live chat into the show. And, um, you know, uh, already our uh, our friend uh, Seth uh, is chatting uh, and he's like, you have the What's ultimate, up, Seth? <laughs> you have the ultimate party pad uh, in the hills. So uh, I guess he, he, he's well, liking your house. <laughs> well, you know what? You know, Seth has been here a, co a couple of different times. I, I actually, you know, bought this place. Uh, when I when I ju when I just turned thirty, and if anybody ever saw the movie Swingers, that was that was pretty much my life. We were we were going to parties and then we'd party here at my house, and then we then we go went out and you know party till four in the morning, and we come back here. And wow. for you know for the first decade, I called it a frat house for thirty year olds. Wow. Then I called it then it became a frat house for forty year olds, and now as <laughs> of a year and a half ago, it was a frat house for. <laughs> Or 50 year old. So, so. so that's what goes on in the Hollywood Hills, huh? Okay. What you gonna do, man? What you gonna do? If, if, if nobody ties you down, you don't get married, you don't squander it on divorces. That's eh, this worst this worst ways to live. There you go. Plus, I mean, you're you're I tell you, you're so busy. I just looking at your bio and just going over the <laughs> clips uh, for the show. I got content up up you know what over here, but uh, you know, for, for an hour show, I'm trying to condense it. And uh, I, I, th I think we have uh, every taste of, of what you've done because you've done everything from comedy to drama. You're, you're really versatile, and, and, and that's what I, I love about you because you really are an actor's actor, and, uh, and you keep busy. And, um, well, 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 yeah, you know, you know I consider myself, you know, I consider myself a, you know, a, 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 journeyman, a journeyman actor. Obviously, uh, I've, done, I've done pretty well. 25 years, 25 yeah. years. I've done pretty well. But the thing about that is, you know, I call myself a that guy because if I walk down the street right now, uh, people would be like, Hey, wait, aren't you, aren't you that guy? Weren't you yeah. that dude from the thing? <laughs> Don't I know you from that one time? You go to my church, you owe me $25. How do I know you? Um, and so it, it's funny because, you know, some, some people know me, black folks know me from uh, between brothers or one-on-one. -on -one. White folks know me from Drew Carey show. Uh, kids know me from, um, you know, Night Squad. Right. Uh, so it's like it's being in this town that long. Everybody knows me from sure. Uh, sure. different things. And you I, know, I the Bank of America doesn't know what I look that, like. Kelly. I want to get into nope. that, but uh, <laughs> so, you know, I have to. I, I, this is like this is crazy. When I was reading your bio, uh, your mom's a chemical engineer. Yeah, my mom's a chemical engineer. So I grew, I grew up in uh, State College, State College, Pennsylvania, Penn State, football, Big Ten, football yeah, country, yeah. right there in the dead middle of Pennsylvania. And my mom was a, a, a chemical engineer, and my dad was a professor there at Penn State. But my wow. dad also um, did community theater. He was a singer, and, you know, he, uh, you know, did a lot of plays and shows. And so by the time I was four and five, I was up on the stage. So I've been performing since I was you know, you know, knee high to to a grasshopper, so, and so, so your, that so was kind of dad, got me into it. Yeah. So did your dad inspire you? Uh, well, that? you know, it, it, he didn't like push me into it or anything because you know, Central Pennsylvania wasn't a thriving <laughs> film yeah. and television community. Right. But you know, if he was going to go and rehearse for his plays and stuff like that, I would I would always tag along. And uh, you know, at an early age, I could you know tell that I could sing, so I was in choir, so they got me into musicals. Um, so, oh, right. you know, he did kind of inspire me in that, you know, being around it every day, uh, I kind of enjoyed and I was, and I was a ham. I was a class clown. I like, I like, I liked attention and still do. You know? you so, so being on stage and having everybody look at me and doing all that was kind of a natural fit for, uh, you know, sure. for my personality, man. And I just kind of, sure. and I just kind of, you know, kept with it and kept with it and kept with it. You're you're in the right right town for that. I can tell you. Yeah. That. Well, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean, I ended up here. It was a, it was a 
you know, a, a, a decent journey for me to get here. Because, you know, after, you know, I grew up in State College. I was about 14. Then I went to high school uh, at a place called Lake Forest Academy outside of Chicago. Hmm. Uh, and I mean, even in Chicago, I was not necessarily, and, and even at the time, you know, John Hughes was doing all his movies. They were doing everything right. for like ordinary people. Um, you know, also all the John Hughes movies here, like 16 Candles. A lot of that stuff was being shot while I was there, but I wasn't really tied into it. I was going to school. I did extra work on a couple of things. Sure. But my mindset wasn't, hey, I'm in Chicago. I'm trying to be uh, a teenage actor. I was just going to school and doing, you're, you're, you know, and doing my thing. That, yeah, at that time, you're feeling out your oats there and you see where where life is going to is going to move you. And uh, yeah, you know, I was just I was just I was just going to going to school. So so a lot of times people are like, oh, well, we were a child actor. I'm like, well, not a child actor in terms of uh, I was in Los Angeles and I was auditioning since I was five trying to make it. I was a child who acted where I was from in the world and just was having fun doing it. And I never had an eye towards, you know, being famous until I got, did, you know, you know, much, much uh, yeah. older. Did you start, did you start with commercials or how, how did, how did it all start? Well, so, so, so my, my whole, like the, the professional, professional, um, you know, part of my, uh, when you got a paycheck, when you got a huh? paycheck, when you got a paycheck. Okay. Well, you know, pretty, pretty <laughs> much, you know, so, so after, after I went to high school, I went to undergraduate school out here in California because my parents moved out here. Uh, so I went to undergraduate school at a place called Pomona College. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to University of California, Irvine to get my MFA in drama. So, so nice. I didn't go to Hollywood to try to make it as an actor until I was 25 years old. Until wow. I had gone to school, gone to grad school. And so I came out to Hollywood at 25 chomping at the bit. And I was up against, you know, people that were doing it since they were four or five. People that were doing it for fifteen, you know, twenty years, and, and, and so here's and me. At that time, and at that time, school. when you were twenty-five, uh, wh how what was Hollywood like as far as you know getting work and trying to you know push yourself in and and uh, you know look, I, I don't think Hollywood's ever been easy, you know, to get into. I think right now it's it's a little different because I think there are so many. Uh, there's so many different platforms, mm -hmm. uh, everything from the streaming platforms, you know, back in the day, ABC, CBS, you know, NBC. Yeah. And then, as you know, once I got here, the, you know, they got the Fox and then other, you know, offshoots, my network TV. But when I got here, three or four, you know, HBO was, was just coming up. So, but there was in some ways a smaller pool of talent. There was not as many people, um, you know, in my category per se, mm -hmm. that were trying, that were trying to do it. Um, right. So I don't necessarily think it was, you know, it's, oh, it was easier then or harder than it's never been easy. But, but, you know, my philosophy of, you know, having trained and coming out here was one that I was expecting to put in the work it takes, you know, it takes to succeed. So I just kind of saw it as, you know, me working and getting my first job, getting that commercial, getting two lines on the Drew Carey show was just a natural progression out yeah, of, that's you know, incredible. deciding that this was my profession, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's incredible. So, I mean, like, uh, there's different styles in acting, you know? Um, and, you know, you're, everything that I've, I've touched on, uh, my majority of it is, is the, you know, the comic roles that you play. <laughs> uh, is, is that something you just gravitated to or is that something that you well well yeah you know what I again I, I've always been you know I've always been a class clown I've always <laughs> I've always wanted attention you know they say if you can't get positive attention you know get some negative attention get some attention goddamn it get it however uh, so I, I'm not going to be ignored Dan no I was going to be <laughs> in the center of attention sure so sure so yeah so some of my natural tendencies do go towards you know, to being funny, to be to being gregarious. When you when you grow up and you're the uh, you know the short chubby kid, you got to try to make the girls laugh. <laughs> oh, so you, order did, to you didn't play any football. Yeah. You didn't play any football. Well, you know, I was playing soccer. I was playing, you know, the, you know, soccer and oh, okay. baseball. And I was in baseball. I had those rex. You remember those rex specs? And shit came back around and the, on the back. And you know, you oh, use those yeah. rex specs for birth yeah. control because yeah. you weren't. <laughs> no girls were going out with you with the big. <laughs> hey, girl. Um, thinking about asking you to the prom. And they're like, please don't. All right, I'm gonna go this way. So, <laughs> so you. So I mean, on, I kind of had to own bits even then. <laughs> hey, even, even back then, man. You know, so so I've always kind of been the funny, gregarious, you know, right. Uh, uh, right. You know, best friend type, where you know we hang at a party for, and I'm working on a girl for hours, and then the 
yeah, yeah. a good looking dude comes in and goes, I'm going to take her. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> been fun talking to you, <laughs> you know, but so, so a lot of my com, you know, my comedy or my natural inclination is to kind of make people laugh and the, do that. So it just kind of, it kind of served me well as I decided to go into comedy right. and, uh, It'll take some of that natural propensity to try to make well your laugh, earlier your uh, earlier to, roles um i had you had 21 jump street but that was so early on in in your in your life in in, in acting and then the drew carey show i mean you had recurring roles i mean you there was like staple you had well you, see, know, you know my first my first real real and i'll talk about some of that my first real real recurring drew uh, uh recurring role was drew carey and this is kind of a you know a story about coming to hollywood and and how I believe you build a career in Hollywood because mm -hmm. um, they say overnight successes take 10 years. And, and you know, it took me about that to kind of get into right. something where people were kind of going, oh, I know who that cat is. But, you know, the first time I auditioned for Drew Carey that show, guy. It was for, uh, it was for two lines. <laughs> right. Huh? I said, you're that guy. <laughs> I, I, I'm that guy, man. But, that's, but, but see, the first time I auditioned for Drew Carey show it was for two lines. Uh -huh. I was a process server. I came in, I handed Drew, uh, I go, are you Drew Carey? Here's the thing. Hey, that's a funny dinner. And I kind of, right, right, you know, right. walked out. But I, I was there. I was on time. I hit my lines. Uh, I did it. I was happy to be there. That's very important. Professional. Yep. And, you know, you, you know, it, two lines became four lines. Four lines yep. became eight lines. Three episodes became six episodes. A year became two years on the show. So it's really kind of a testament to the fact that if you, you know, I, I'll, I'm going to come back to it. I call myself a journeyman because, you know, if you just do your work, right. if being a star isn't your ultimate goal, but it's something that's a byproduct of doing good work and being reliable and knowing what you're doing, yeah. you know, then you're going to, then you're going to work forever because at the end yeah. of the day, this is an industry that's unlike yet like every other industry. And that people want to work with people they know. They want to work with people that they exactly. can rely on. Right. Uh, they want to know that who, when their reputation's on the line, the people they, they vouched for are going to be there for them. So a lot of times, I don't necessarily see acting or this industry as any different than a lot of industries where people are, you know, are, are applying their trade, trying to be a professional, and trying to move up the ladder. What what uh, what roles do you find the most challenging as far as you know uh, when you take on a role? Uh, whether it be, uh, you know, a drama role or a comic role. I mean, you're into physical comedy. You, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't know, I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's the role, you know, the, whether or not it's comedy or drama per se, that is the hard part of it. You know, what is, what is challenging and hopefully, you know, you know, as someone who's trained and went to school and, mm -hmm. and I, and I hope that I have all the tools in the toolbox and all the, all the arrows in the quiver if it's called upon. But what can be difficult is if, you know, you come in for, a show that you watch or you come in for a show that's established or a show that everybody loves and and, and and you are the person who is a guest star who's supposed to come in you're supposed to service the scene service the actors who are already in there right. leave your ego behind not try to chew up all the furniture and say hey you need to have me back next week <laughs> your job is to lay down the bunt and go the fuck back into the dugout <laughs> there, <laughs> you know there, so the challenge is to make yeah, is there a lot of actors like that in Hollywood? I mean, you know, actors that come in and, and think who the hell they are, and, and meanwhile they well, haven't. Really well, I mean, it's it's you, you know, it, it, it can be. It, it, look, this can be a tough industry in that if you believe that, or if a actor comes into a situation and believes that mm -hmm. this is going to be my this is my one chance. I always say that the movie and the song Eight Mile" by uh, you know um, by Eminem has done a lot of people disservice. You only got one shot. Do right, not miss right, your right, chance right. to float. Because I'm for to fuck that. That's bullshit. All right. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. as many opportunities as you want to create for yourself. And so if you walk into a set and you think that this is my one shot and I got to impress everybody and I got to make sure that I'm remembered and I got to make sure that I do something special. You know, the thing that you can do special is, is you know, make strong, justified choices. You mm -hmm. know, hit your mark, help mm -hmm. everybody out, help the actors be on right. time, right. you know, because everybody else on set has has fires that they're trying to put out. Your job is not to be a fire to be put out. Your job is to be there, you know, to be an extinguisher, to help to, exactly. like I said, to move the runners in that in that situation. Now, when you become a series regular or something like that, that that's a different story. But when you talk about what's the hardest thing, it's not necessarily drama or comedy. 
uh, 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 it, it's about the situation that you're put into and understanding that this isn't about me. This is a fantastic opportunity because any day on the set, any day that you're working is better than, you know, well, for me being, you know, in, a, in an office where you hear the hum of the fluorescence. So, you know, <laughs> you, you take it and you and you run, you know. Well, I mean, uh, you're um, you were part of this night, uh, the Night Squad, um, and uh, that was like uh, you had a role on that show, uh, and it's a children's show. It's a, it's a Nickelodeon show. Um, I had, I'm going to show a, a, a clip here in a minute, um, but you know how how was it working with you know kids uh, and being in that you know arena, uh, let's say, as an actor. And you're you're an elder, you know, uh, an elderly person to them, you know. And, and <laughs> no, well, you know, I, I, you know. Yeah, no, no, it's, yeah, it's, no, I know, I know, I know exactly what I know exactly what you're saying. And you know, I've done a couple of shows uh, on the show called um, One on One. I also right. played. I was one of the adults to the kids. Um, this show, Night Squad, I actually not only was on the set, was I the one adult around the kids. I was also right. uh, I was also playing their teacher. And I was playing their teacher, and I was also someone who'd been in Hollywood for, what, 25, 22 years at that time. And so it was also my job to kind of teach these kids uh, a work ethic, a professional work ethic, uh, like I was saying, uh, showing up on time, knowing your lines, doing your work. And that, and that, that's like great for them to, to, to know, you know, have, you know, you know, they'll get, they'll, they'll, they'll get they can get they'll take what they can take you know it's, it's funny because these young kids they you know they're walking they're always they're always on the social medias they're always like hey yeah. hey yeah. sir Gary, say hello to my four hundred thousand. I'm like God, how many hey <laughs> you know and so a lot of time you're like you have your school teacher come on come on come on look, let's do the scene stop it right. you right. can you can snapchat right. snap do tick tock tick tooks <laughs> all that you know downstream download do all that after let's go ahead come on you <laughs> Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So it is like I don't have kids, but I, you know, but it is like being a teacher, being a parent that you're uh, you're sure. trying to go. Hey, let's let's put the let's put the um, the devices down and let's 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 exactly let's, you know, what's well, going on. I, I have a clip here. Uh, for, uh, now the show um, is that show still in production or no? It's not. We had we had uh, two seasons, thirty episodes, but uh, so but you can find it on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. Night Squad, K N I G F T. So you can find it out there. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you, do and, your own, you do your own stunts. Uh, well, you know what? I, I, you know, I there, There's a few stunts that I had to bring somebody in, in on. But uh, I, I did as many uh, as, as I could and uh, as my contract would allow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But for those of you that are of an older generation, you may recognize uh, Fred Grandy of The Love Boat as uh, Wizard Hogan Cross. Uh, Fred oh. Grandy played uh, uh, Gopher on the Love Boat, oh, so I got the chance Gopher? to work oh, with him. But it was, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you, if you go back and look, that's uh, that's 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 Gopher. That's Gopher from the from the Love Boat. <laughs> but he, you know that was a that was a great. Again, when you're a series regular, when you know you have a job, you know you have a place to go next week. Uh, it's fantastic because you can you can just play. So unlike when you're uh, a guest star and you have yeah. to try to service the other characters and you kind of come in, there's pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're a series regular and you're on the credits and people know you're coming back, it's, sure. it's fantastic. So you just you just get to play. And uh, we had a great time working with the kids. The funny thing about that show is that you can see I had a I had an eye patch. Right. And I, you know, and I wear glasses and I'm nearsighted. And oh, so wow. I had an eye patch. And so I would always have to lift it up, try to see what the what the hell is going on, and then put it back on, <laughs> and then go, okay, roll, 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 I can still rec- remember where the hell everybody is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did, did you have any mentors when it, when you were, uh, uh, you know, getting into the craft and owning yourself? Well, you, you, you know what, you know, co- you know coming up, I, I probably, I watched the same, you know, folks that everybody else said, you know, I'm a big, a big Denzel fan. Um, obviously, I was a big, I, mean, I was did a big anybody, scene. you know, once you were, once you were in Hollywood and, and acting and taking on these roles, did you find somebody uh, or did somebody take a liking to you that that was an actor established that, you know, kind of brought you under his wing or her wing? You know, not necessarily you know, to that degree, but I'm, I, I, I do believe that if if people have somebody that's a mentor and I every once in a while now, I kind of get every once in a while, I'll, I'll reach out to somebody right. and I'll be like, hey, man, I really like your work. I remember a time coming up when I was 
just starting. I was doing a show called Hanging with Mr. Cooper, mm-hmm. and Mark Curry was the uh, star. And you know, I look over, and Will Smith uh, was you know kind of watching the scene. And Will Smith was you know coming off of uh, you know Fresh Prince and still doing that. And Will yeah, Smith sure. was on his ascension. And you know, I was like, oh hey, well how you doing, man? How you doing? And he goes, hey, you know, hey, I, I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm like, hey, hey, Will, I love what you do. And he's like, hey, man, I'm watching what you do, and uh, you know, you're funny, you're making me laugh. And so, wow, that's uh, good. that was that was a great that's everything. moment. Uh, what if I was, yeah, that was that was awesome. That's why I'm like, that's like Will Smith. And then now, even over the years, I'm like, that was Will Smith. <laughs> I also was like, damn, amazing. Also, one time I was in a theater company with uh, uh, with Rain Pryor, who was Richard Pryor's. Um, daughter and I went over to you know I met Richard Pryor once and I wow. don't remember what I said to him because he was <laughs> in a wheelchair he was getting a little older and I leaned down and I whispered someone to, you know to, to Richard Pryor and, and I remember he looked up and kind of and laughed <laughs> you know I remember I had, I had something prepared and he laughed and I'm like ah I made Richard Pryor laugh <laughs> oh say some shit universe I was done you know <laughs> But, well, but I found that, myself. You got that way about you, Kelly. You know. I mean, oh man, it was like that's that's Richard. Pry- I'm done, man. Yeah. But you know, that's some it. of the people. I, I got a chance. I got a chance to work with some of you know people that that I admired. Like like my one of my first shows was Between Brothers, and I worked with uh, Tommy Davidson, who was coming off of In Living Color, which was the you know huge show yeah, at the yeah. time. Sure. Um, Kadeem Hardison, who was coming off of um, uh, A Different World. And then you had uh, Dondre Whitfield, who was coming off of uh, one, one of the sitcoms, like a, you know, All My Children, and also Cosby Show. Right. Uh, and then, and then here's me, <laughs> like, a, <laughs> like a kid fresh out of grad school. And I'm saying, like, anybody else have student loans? Anybody? No. <laughs> House in the Hills? Okay, fantastic. Anybody else have student loans? Nobody knows. I need this job so we can love it. And so it was kind of cool to to be there with guys who had been working in Hollywood and being like the yeah. fourth in that. And I remember one time Tommy was on a uh, talk show and he said, hey, look out for this guy, Tom, uh, Kelly Breen. And, uh, you know, that made me feel good. And so, you know, those what guys about, what about, all have um, done well. I mean, you know, uh, you're acting and, and you're, you're, you're doing your whole comedy. What about stand-up? Have you, have you uh, experienced any? Uh, have you done any of that stuff? You know what? I, 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 I dabbled. I nibbled around the edges that's uh, the of stand-up. Ultimate. And you're on stage. you got the mic. Well, but see, but... But here, but here, but here's the thing about here's the thing that that I believe about stand up, uh, and you know, and it it goes back to what I was talking about about you know choosing your vocation. Right. Stand up is a completely different muscle, a mm-hmm. uh, completely different mindset. Um, when I came out here, like everybody else, and still to this to this day to a degree, um, they hand not that they hand sitcoms to uh, stand up, right. but you're more likely to have a, a, an offer from a studio. Uh, mm-hmm executive can kind of see the only because when you do a stand-up routine a, a, you know tight five minutes you have to tell the audience very quickly what your perspective is hey you know i'm a short black kid from from central pennsylvania who is trying to make it a bit hey i'm a fat jewish right, woman right, 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 from there i'm a there so you know very quickly what the audience and tell the audience what you're allowed to laugh at so whenever they're trying to build a show around you they kind of have that perspective all of these comedians, you know, Seinfeld is a show about him being a, you know, a comedian. Ray mm-hmm. Romano is a show about him and his wife, his kids. It's kind of, they build it around the perspective that the comedy shows. When you're, right. when you're just an actor and you're kind of just funny, there's, there's nothing that to go, okay, what can, what world can we build around you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, it's, that's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, you it's know, a little just... different, but I, but I will, but I will say this though. Um, so, but I got to a point because I do believe I, I know a million one comics and that's a lifestyle. You have to want to get up on stage sure is. five, six days a week. You have to want to work from nine at night to three in the morning to the comedy clubs work. Yeah. Uh, close. You, you have to want to fight for your t- You have to want to do that. And you have to want to keep your instrument fresh because yes. it's a vocation. It's a lifestyle. Yes. And I look at my acting. I look at what I've chosen uh, as a vocation. It's my job. The same way if I chose to do stand up, I would have to choose to look at that as a nine to five, eight hour a day job as well. Now, um, I think a lot of people get, yeah. I wonder, you know, the comedians that, you know, the flip side of that is, you know, the comedians that had that role 
and didn't do the whole acting thing and then now catapulted themselves into the acting. I mean, obviously, the, 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 the principal comedians like Seinfeld and, and, and uh, you, you know, of, of, his, of his time. But, you know, there, there's comedians that, that come into the whole acting world and, and there right. must be like, uh, I don't know. I, with, well, you, you, you know, I, I think I think that, you know, if, if you're if you're a well-known comic or you do well in, 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 in comedy, there, there is a there's a through line of, of, of charisma. There's, right. a, there's a there's a through line of gregariousness. There's a through line of, um, you know, people wanting to be around you. There's you know, there's there's something right. there's a right. there's a je ne sais quoi. There's a je something quoi. about you. Yeah. yeah, that 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 makes people want to watch you, look at you, be with you, and and that's never a bad thing for a visual medium like television sure. uh, mm -hmm. or film. So in order to try to manufacture that, um, if you're not a comedian, it could be harder to go that way than a comedian going, you know, to to, to become become an actor. But um, if all things are equal and you're in your are full of life and bubbly and gregarious, as opposed to super super talented yeah it might be a horse race <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um so here's the thing <laughs> our friend uh, <laughs> seth uh created this uh sitcom and uh it's it's incredible i mean it's so, it's so funny hey he know uh, man and he's he done did, such he did a great, great job. job and uh i have a clip here uh with you and uh uh tangerine and and the, and the cast uh, I think it's the second season, uh, and uh, you're so funny in it. And it's it's uh, uh, it's it, it's uh, what a, what a great idea uh, he yeah, had. Yeah, no, that's all. I'll tell you what. Play, play play the clip, and I'll explain to you how I met Seth and how I okay. got involved in the project. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Ten minutes, everybody. Oh, I like a woman who takes charge. Yeah, so does my husband. Here you work with Linda. Surprised she didn't tell me about you. Really? She told me all about you. So have you ever been to the house before? Can I get some of that? Oh, you can get a drink if that's what we're talking about. What else would we be talking about? Oh. See, so you work with Josh. Yeah, how'd you know? Because you both have the same boring ass approach to conversation. Why are the cute ones always so stupid? Who's Delilah? What's that? Is that the waitress? Yes, sir. I don't yeah. give a fuck about her job title. When did you get her name? Surprise! What the fuck? Happy birthday. No, no, no. Your problem wasn't that you remembered the waitress's name. Your problem was that you let Linda know that you remembered the waitress's name. Server. Okay, whatever, all right? But if Linda calls her a waitress, you just you just let it slide, all right? In fact, Linda can call that bitch whatever she wants, and you just let it slide. Bitch. That's not me calling her a bitch. That's me preparing you for when Linda calls her a bitch, and you just let it slide. Uh-huh. Because well, you're the expert on how to handle women? What, between the two of us? Yeah, I think I am. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, oh, I know this. If a woman tells me she does not want a birthday party, she sure as hell don't want a surprise birthday party. Wait, somebody would let me know. Could have saved me a lot of trouble. I'm right down the hall. I should have. Next time. I told him over and over, I don't want a birthday party. Which I still don't understand. I don't like people focusing on my age. Not buying it. Okay, Josh wanted the party for himself. What did he get out of I'm it? I'm not the one who invited my yoga instructor and her roommate. Whitney and Brittany were a good addition. He loves younger women now that he let his hair go gray. They're all into the whole silver fox vibe. It's so annoying. See, <laughs> women love that, you know, that silver fox daddy thing. That's the best move you ever made. But I don't do anything to encourage him. I mean, Linda was the one that got Delilah involved. Whoa, whoa, here's another thing. You can't call her Delilah. You can call her server, you can call her waitress, but you can't call her Delilah. That's a good point. Uh, but, I mean, Linda was trying to make me look bad. I mean, it's not my fault that Delilah... Oui, she. That the server... Yeah. That the waitress... Better. Uh, ...thought I was handsome. But, yeah, well, cute. She never said handsome. Oh, tomato, tomato. Well, yeah. Oh, speaking of beautiful women... She's married. Who's married? Never mind. You think I was asking about Amy? No. You think I was asking about a married woman about half a foot taller than me just because she's black? I thought I saw you talking to her. She kept trying to find out whether or not I'd been to your house before. What did you say? <laughs> what is that? That's what you say when you're not quite sure exactly how to answer. And it works? All the time. <laughs> Needs work. So you had a bet with Amy that she was not your only black friend. How did you know that? Because you're not my only white friend. Ha. Huh. Okay, so who is this woman that you like? Connie Young, very pretty. Uh, name? I'm sure she has one. And you don't know it? No, but she was mixed, so that might might narrow it down. I'm pretty sure there wasn't a mixed woman at the party. I think she works with Linda. That sounds like Samantha, but she's not mixed. Uh, well, she's not mixed that white people would know, but I noticed. In particular, white people that don't see color and have a lot of black friends? You do realize that was the first time I'd been to your house. But not the first time Samantha had been there. Well, maybe the last time now that you know there's a little coffee in the cream. Hey, do you really think Samantha's mixed? Mm. 
Do you, does that mean I get another 20 bucks from Amy? Well, at least 10. Ah, that, see, the way the math. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Linda. It was a bunch of people I barely know and don't even like. And me, I see you enough. No offense, none taken. Yeah, Josh. Hey, uh, I'm here with Kevin. Who? Uh, well, he was just saying how much fun he had at the party. Oh, the guy you invited to win the bet with Amy. Yeah, the funny guy. So what about Kevin? He was asking about a woman at the party, uh, and I think it was Samantha. You think it might have been Samantha? Who's asking about me? Well, he says the woman was mixed. No, Samantha's not mixed. I am mixed. You are? How did you not know this? I don't see color. Apparently not. Kevin was right, she's mixed. Oh. Congratulations. She's into me. No, she's mixed. About me. No, mixed race. Told you. So you want me to ask a woman who is clearly out of his league if she will go out with a guy who doesn't even remember her name? I wouldn't say that in front of her. Who doesn't remember my name? What'd she say? Kevin. Is that the guy who raped his assistant? Uh, you didn't remember her name? Allegedly raped. I mean, allegedly harassed. That's okay. No, no, it's not. So no, that was Doug. This is Kevin. Short, glasses. Well, I wouldn't describe him that way. But what'd she say? <laughs> yeah, still needs work. The black guy? <laughs> <laughs> what what a great concept! I mean, uh, Seth, uh, he, he's he's good, right? Writing and yes, I mean, no, you know, here, here's the funny thing, man. You know, I here's how I met Seth and got involved in that project. We were at a convention, and we were hanging out in like uh, you know one of the areas having a cocktail, and I kind of sat down, and I, he goes to me, "Were you were you on a show called One on One?" And I'm like, "What?" Uh, yeah, how do I know you? Did I go to your church? Do I owe you money? How did? Yeah, you know, <laughs> and he's like, You're that no. guy. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you that? Who was it? He goes, No, I cut a trailer for one on one that you did twenty oh. some odd years ago. Wow. And I'm like, Get out of here! And so we had a couple of drinks. We exchanged numbers, and he's like, I have a project called, you know, here's the thing. Would you like to be involved? And like, show me where to, you know, you know where to come, what time are you to be there, and you know, it's in, it is what it is. You see, you see, you see what it is, and it's snappy and it's fast and it's fast paced. And you, let me tell you what, Hollywood, take notice that that the second the lights come back on, let's we should be in pre in production for that. Wow, wow. <laughs> I I tell you, uh, uh, another chat came in, um, and it's uh, uh, from F Salicito, and he says, Kelly, uh, this is the first time I'm seeing you. And you are very funny. You're making me laugh. Very talented. <laughs> so, uh, and then Seth. Is hey, I'll saying, take that. I'll, I'll take that. I appreciate it. Thank absolutely. you, Dale. Yeah. And uh, Seth is uh, saying, uh, and I remember the funnies from the show one on one. Oh, the, yeah, the funnies. The funnies. I, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. You know, I appreciate that too. Cause, cause again, uh, you know, one, one on one. Um, it was me and Flex and, and Kyle. That was another thing. I was I was one or two years out of school. Three, you know, yeah. you, you know, I was 27, yeah, was 28. Really there, and man. I'm like, oh God. Like I said, I might be able to pay some bills with this. Please, <laughs> please let it get a second season. <laughs> please. And that's a, the beautiful feeling is in the here's the ups and downs of, of Hollywood. The beautiful feeling is, you know, when you get the call, hey man, we're going for a second season and we're doing promos, we're going through a third season. Uh, we, I, I got four seasons, and then um, when they were doing a fifth season, right. they were like, "Hey, you know, thank you very much for your contribution, but we're gonna go in a different direction, and we're gonna concentrate on the kids." And so I'm like, "Okay, let me call my contractor. Let, let you know, I, I'll go put a new wing <laughs> on the Perine Estate." So let me, <laughs> man, that's, that's Hollywood. Right. That's like this. It's up and down, and it's Seth you know, but all you can do, all you can do, is all you can do, man. He's saying the sleepy eye joke. Seth is saying the sleepy eye joke. What is that reference? I don't even know. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? That you know, it was in one of the early episodes where there was a couple of girls, and uh, you know, you know, Flex had his girl, and and he she she brought one of her girlfriends. You know how it is whenever you know couples be like, hey, you bring one of your girlfriends for my boy, you know. And right, there was a right, thing right, where right, I looked at right. the girl that he brought, and I and I think I said, oh, I detect a hint of sleepy eye. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, yeah. Because, you know, my character is one of those guys that, like, you know, was a quirky himself. So a little sleepy eye. He's like, fantastic. That's all right. But, yeah, uh, that, was, that was a fun character. And actually, just so people know, that show one-on-one -on -one is actually coming back to, to Netflix uh, October 15th. So oh, wow. if you want to okay. check out the antics of my character, Dwayne oh, Odell man. Knox, October 15th, we're back, back on, uh, on Netflix. All right. All right, we got to check into that. Um, so tell me about uh, that guy 
How did that? Is that is that something well, so, that so, you're, you're part of? Like I know because you're producing. Well, your yeah, that's something that you know that I that I came up conceptualized with with a group of friends. See, you know, as you kind of move along in Hollywood, you, you kind of start to go, okay, you know what? I have my own ideas. I have uh, friends that I've been around and know what they're doing for 15, 16, 20 years that are super talented, super creative, uh, and they're you know, not getting, or I'm not getting, or we're not getting the breaks we believe we should be getting. Because uh, a lot of times, it, a lot of the roles go to the same people over and over. Mm -hmm. And I'm lucky that I'm in kind of the, the strata that I get work kind of repeatedly. But again, no, I'm not above the marquee yet. So uh, that guy is a, um, uh, is a project uh, that I, along with, you know, uh, you know, Blake West, his wife, Camille West, uh, Sean Harris, um, kind of came up with where I am playing, like I said, a that, that guy. guy. <laughs> Kelly Putin is that guy. And it kind of like follows me, you know, a C-level celebrity in Hollywood yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. trying to make it to the B minus. <laughs> no, it's a great yeah. concept. I do have a, uh, a trailer. Uh, oh, no, oh, yeah, it's funny. Go ahead. Check, check this out. This is fun. This is Kelly. Kelly Perrine. Hello? You famous or something? You don't recognize him? This guy is kind of a big deal. His name's Kelly Perrine. He's been in movies, TV shows, all kinds of stuff. These are Kelly's friends. Oh, man, you look good. You look good too, man. You're like a blackbuster Keaton, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a, I don't know. <laughs> it's, burp, 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 it's a hat. It's a choice. It's an odd choice. Yeah. This is Kelly's assistant. You think Rick Ross is at home right now? Give me this. You think Diddy's at home right now drinking a diet soft drink? Hey, man! Hey, you know who worries about his carpet? That guy. This is Kelly's career. Um, we did have one no-show. It was um, Kelly Perrine, the Scarlet. That's ballsy. Give him the part. Oh, what about all these other um, applicants? What? I'm going to give this part to some nobody who was in something that one time whose name nobody can remember? No. Give it to Kelly Perrine, that guy. This is Kelly's life. He struggles to make it from the D-list. Dude, don't I know you? Oh, uh, yeah. Damn, okay. Greg freaking Jones, man. I have not seen you forever, Greg. How you doing? You got the wrong guy. My name's Kelly Perrine. Then where do I know you from? I'm an actor. To the C-list. Are you Kelly Perrine? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, we usually don't get too many big-time celebrities like you around here. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna get you boys something to drink on the house. Oh, uh, all right. That means for free. And become more than just that guy. I saw you for the last two years, Happy Endings, you're killing it. So funny on that show, man. It's one of the Wayans guys, it's one of the brothers. Those guys are funny. Man. They do good work. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a great idea, man. I, I, I want to be that guy. I mean, you know, you always, uh, when you walk in the streets, it's, you, so, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's like, so... <laughs> you want to you be noticed, right? It's like- a, But again, but again, I think, but but I mean I think it kind of shows when I when, when I say and I say I'm a journeyman actor people are like oh you've got all these guys I'm I'm serious in that you know I get my parts I do myself da, 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 but I'm also out there you know trying to you know I'll sell you an encyclopedia right I'll say you know, I'm trying to sell shows and trying to that that because you you know this is an industry where you know if you're an actor or a writer or producer you're commodity is you, is your writing, it's your right. scripts, it's your right. material, it's your stuff. Right. And much like Seth is taking around, here's the thing, and, and I have that guy, you know, I'm I'm pitching stuff to Hollywood and I'm throwing stuff up, up against the wall and, and I'm coming up with concepts and, uh, you know, the word no means nothing to me. And if it did, well, you, 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 you think something. the word no is going to mean something to you, don't come to Hollywood. From, from a person on the other side of the fence that's, that's a viewer and a fan, I mean, it's like, I think they ran out of ideas in Hollywood. They, they're, you know, regurgitating the same stuff. They're changing scripts around and it's, they need fresh new ideas. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you, I don't, I don't disagree with you. The, the, you know, the unfortunate part is that a lot, a lot of times, uh, you know, the studio heads, the executives, yeah. those that, you know, have the, the power to green light, um, they're, they they're really choice, not, you know, yeah. They're really not risk takers. Right. And so, you know, they, they got kids in private school. They got, <laughs> a, you know, a, a couple of divorces that they're trying to pay for. <laughs> they got mortgages to pay. So, they're, you know, I don't, you know, there are some that are making strong, bold, creative choices, but a lot of them are kind of just white knuckling it and trying to hold on to, 
you know, to what they have. And so as Hollywood opens up and reopens, I'm, it's, it, you know, it could go one of two ways. It could go, uh, we're going to be so cautious that we're only going to green light stuff that they can't say was my fault in any yeah. way, yeah. or we're just going to take our chances. We're just going to, we're just going to go for it. We're just going to go after stuff that's creative, new, that's fresh, that's, um, hasn't been seen before. So who knows, but I, but I know I'll be ready to roll in, in either way. <laughs> yeah, sure. hey, I got uh, shit for him. You, you worked with, um, Robin Williams, um, and you, you did something. I, I did. I ran a clip and I don't know what, where, what was that from? Uh, the, cl the clip was from, uh, the crazy ones. The crazy and I think that was what his last, you know, scripted sitcom before, mm. or, uh, be, be, before yeah. he passed. And now Robin Williams is, uh, someone who, you know, as as a performer, as not even a comedian, it, 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 he was someone I, I admired. And so to, to, to work with him, I only worked with him, you know, the table read maybe, and then the day that we shot. But, you know, the guy, the, his brain was just was so quick. And in between Amazing. takes, he would joke and he would riff and uh, and he would make and he would make us all laugh and he made us all feel fantastic. And you can just kind of felt, you know, to feel that, you know, being on set, yeah. being yeah. around people performing that's where he got his energy yeah you know and yeah. i kind of felt lucky and blessed to be able to oh you know God. have have yeah. that one experience you know you a know with him um, and, Under, yeah know, there was it, there, there was there was no there was no doubt about the fact that that you were in the presence of greatness, greatness. you know what i mean yeah yeah and you just kind of just kind of you know sad because i mean he just wanted to you know just from his comedy all, specials suck it all in and and uh you know take all the energy that he has and i mean must have been great just to just to yeah but see and that and that's a and that and that's and that's an example of you know i wasn't there to try to one up robin williams yeah. so that the production team could be like oh we got to bring him back my right. job was to as he was riffing you know Right. You know, support. just right. kind of yeah. fill in whatever little gaps the script sat had for me, and da, 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 so that I was there to there to, to service you know service the project. Sure. And you know, in a time as a professional, as an actor, whatever your your job is to really just kind of whatever it can you can do to make the project sing, you know, hit yes. the hit hit the note. Um, you, you know, know, you you've worked on your own stuff too. Uh, and uh, co-writing and, and producing. I got a downward hero here in the hopper uh, that I want to show. Uh, can you set it up? Yeah, well now downward hero is, is, is a project that I wrote and, um, and I starred in and co-directed uh, with a buddy of mine that I've known for 30 years that I met on the first day I went to college. And in it, I play a troubled man who uses yoga, who uses yoga to not only uh, quiet his mind, but you find out without giving too much away that he is an extractor of information, AKA a torturer. And he puts people <laughs> in the same yoga down dog, uh, <laughs> you know, type of positions that he uses for himself. So our catchphrase for it is what hurts you heals you. Right. And uh, you know, downward hero, the, the short film, which you can find on kellyperine.com in some ways is a meditation uh, the same way a yoga class is a meditation and it'll take you from the heights of euphoria when you release and just let go and it'll it, you'll, it'll have you crying for mama <laughs> because the heat of the room and the position I, well, I you know clip. that, that I have the a, yoga, it's, you know. a, I, it's a trailer Let, let's take a look welcome everyone thank you guys so much for coming in and joining me this morning we're going to spend the next 90 minutes getting connected to our minds, our bodies, and our souls. I know it's a pain in the ass, but hey, plausible deniability, right? Oops. Stay you calm. Right. You know I know where I am, right? He tried. God bless him. His heart's in the right place. Flex the toes back towards you. You got it.
Um, I quiet up in here. People got tingling. Got a big no, drop no, up in this. What happened? It, it just shows. <laughs> it just shows how versatile you are, and and uh, it's incredible, man. I mean, well, it's good. It, you know, you know, like I said, when I went when I went to grad school and spent you know three years in grad school, you know, rolling around on mats, so you know, trying to <laughs> trying to get your voice to come from center and doing Shakespeare and Fugard yeah. and all that shit. You're like ah. So every so every once in a while, again, I I, I try to justify why I spent all that money on school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, well, and try to do like a, um, uh, a couple more chats that came in. Um, uh, again, with the compliments that you have perfect comedic time timing, um, and uh, uh, Seth wanted to know if that was the lawyer from Seinfeld, Jackie Child. That was that was so that's uh, that's that's um, Phil Lewis. Okay. Who uh, who played uh, Jackie Child? Jackie Child. Who, who told you to say that? <laughs> See, and actually, you know, I did the, I did an episode of Seinfeld, and I was the usher who comes in and kicks Seinfeld out because he spills a cafe latte right, on right, him. Right. And Phil Lewis comes in and is introduced the next episode, and Phil Lewis is playing Jackie Child, who was obviously a um, oh god, what's his name from the uh, from the OJ. Uh, from the OJ case, a um, if the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. It, 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 it's his name. Oh, oh, and so the, yes, that, that's uh, the the lawyer from from yes uh, yes from yes. Uh, it, it'll kind of oh. be. And so yes, Phil Phil, yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna. I don't know. Help us out there in the chat land. It's gonna rack know. all of our brains. But help us but out. Phil um, Lewis. That was Phil Lewis. And also, if you can see in. Um, yeah, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying also, if you can see in um, in Kelly Pruden is that guy. There was also a guy named um, Kevin uh, who Johnny Cochran. It, there it Kevin is. Kevin Wiseman. Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran. Yeah. If the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> and so he was playing Jackie Child. Jackie Child. And so, but see, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of being. That's the beauty of being in Hollywood and working with people and knowing folks that yeah. you can just call up Jackie Child <laughs> and be like, Phil, I need you. Uh, can, where, can you be in a warehouse in the middle of downtown? Um, <laughs> you might have to step over a crack pipe to get to the set, but you'd be, it'd be a big favor for me. And <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> you know? Tangerine can just you... signed in. She, uh, she just oh. chatted in. T Tangerine, how you doing there, Tangerine? Yeah, no, 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 and, and again, Tangerine, Seth, Phil, all these people, you know, to be able to work with these creative, fantastic people, man, and you know, and every once in a while, I get paid for it. But but always, you know, <laughs> you feel like you know you were put on this earth for this, and to, to, to try and to create, man, it's 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 pretty fantastic. And and I know everybody out there has, even if it's not like acting, is it? Right. Everybody has something that I think that is a calling. And especially on the other side of all this bullshit. Might as well go for it, huh? Exactly. Because <laughs> as exactly. we as we all see, it can change like that. So Absolutely. if you were you know, if you were unhappy on that side of everything, and you didn't like your job, you know, da, 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 and you lost it all, shit, you might as well go for it on this side. Might as well, might you know. Well. And, uh, and you, you I like have you mentioned loved what it is. I've done. You, you mentioned Seinfeld, <laughs> which my my favorite uh, sitcom. Um, and uh, when I saw this clip, I was like, and I, I know all the Seinfelds, and, and so does my son. And, and we, were, we were just on the floor laughing because I, we remembered that yeah, yeah. scene. So let me run, let me run the side clip. This, this is oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. here we go, here we go. You better finish your little uh, cafe latte there. They'll never let you in with it. Why not? Because they don't allow outside drinks into the movie. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> that's the rule. Yeah, well, we'll just see if we can't get around that. Pardon me. Excuse us. Hey, hey, what's going on? What just happened here? Nothing, nothing. What do you got? Huh? One of those cafe lattes in your shirt? I don't have anything. Why? Ask him. All right. Come on, coffee boy. Bring it out. What? Come on, I'll snap it. Here we go.
coffee boy. <laughs> a lot. <to> <laughs> and I um, and I'll tell you what, man. Here's here's the here's the beauty and power of that one little thing that I've done on Seinfeld, and you know uh, how blessed I feel to be on it. You know, when that episode came out, uh, I was all, I think I was also on another show. And, you know, a lot of my friends were like, yo, I saw you on Seinfeld. And I go, yeah, but I mean, I have a show that I'm on every week. They go, oh, I don't watch that. But you on Seinfeld. <laughs> like, Mother, you're my friend. You're supposed to watch me. Oh, I don't watch that. Did you see you on Seinfeld? I'm like, yeah, I saw me on. I see. Never, you know what? It was cool, wasn't it? I was on Seinfeld, wasn't it? That was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and and I have been around the world. I was in Puerto Rico shooting something, and on the on the hotel TV, Seinfeld came on. Inevitably, like every you know, once or twice a month, someone's like, "Saw you on Seinfeld." Saw you, and I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> and so, and that's a, that, and that's and that's an example of you know being on a show that I watched and uh, being yeah, on the show, yeah. and I'm like, "Hey, there's Kramer," and this. You know, oh, no, no, there's Jerry and there's Elaine what, and there's, what was, you, you I know. Mean, what was it, it the like? It's, it, it's to work very with cool. Them. What was it to work with those guys? I mean, uh, again, well, you know, like, comic again, genius. They uh, were. Seinfeld and Kramer. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was fantastic. And again, my, it was, I was, I was young in the industry. I was young in the industry, two or three years in. And uh, I remember the audition because, you know, because now, because of Curb Your Enthusiasm and Jerry, yeah. Sa- I, Jerry was in the room and um, Larry David was in the room. And I remember I made him laugh with the, you know, here we go, Stab it up. here we go, come on, come on, coffee boy. And I made him laugh and I got the, uh, and I got, and I got the, uh, the part. And I do remember this, I do remember this because he spills, he's, he, you know, he spills his coffee. And I, I'm almost sure that uh, Andy Ackerman was, was directing the episode. And, you know, he, he didn't want to spill it 18 times on himself. Right. And so I had a cue from the director when I was supposed to come down, which wasn't relayed to through somebody, I wouldn't say, to, uh, to Kramer. And so, like, the third time I came down, because I took a cue from whoever, like, stage director, and uh, he had to do it. And in Kramer's mind, I was... I was early and I was just, and I'm like, okay, I'll go back. I'm like, okay, this is on me. It's on me. Go back. Cause, cause my job was to move the runners. My job was to have, you know, him yeah, you know, yeah. do his bit, do his moment. How many, and, how many uh, takes did it take uh, to do that? Uh, four or five. But I mean, you know, after like, you know, two or three with the, with yeah. the coffee running down his leg, I'm sure he was ready to change his pants. Yeah, he, he's such a physical <laughs> uh, comedian that uh, it's. Just... Yeah, no, it's, it's that you know, it, it's but you know, but but when you do, when you watch it, it's you know, and uh, it was Michael Richards, and yeah. I know Michael Richards had his his ups and downs with you know with you know his whole thing with using the N word and everything, but yeah, I, I, he was fantastic to work with, and and hopefully he'll get a second chance. Because he's incredibly talented, and maybe I'll put him on one of my shows. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. Um, yeah. So um, that was a, it. Was an awesome, awesome experience. Yeah, I, I have um, a couple more clips here. Um, you know, with, with uh, uh, you, 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 I think you're behind them. The the pork chop scene, the hot date. Um, uh, uh, yeah, reservation that- for three. That's another one. That's another one. Uh, Candace and Peter's Peter Smoking Hot Day. Uh, that's another thing that I, uh, I co-wrote with the woman. Uh, her name is Leanne uh, Melissa Bishop. We co-wrote it together. She and her husband directed it. Um, and that's just another example of if you have downtime, create. And so yeah. she and I have created these characters called Candace and Peter. Uh, we have three installments of our movies, uh, and we're turning them into a, into a TV show. So anybody out there who is looking for uh, a diverse, you know, salt and pepper, black and white, you know, man and woman team for their next thing, you, I, I got I to gotta tee it up for you. But yeah, go ahead and... <laughs> All right, here's a trailer of uh, hot, hot Date. Here we go. All right, here we go. Cool. Let me get you here. <laughs> 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 I feel like Caesar. Well, hail Caesar. I know Caesar from uh, from the Dog Whisperer. 
I finally got my chihuahua to sit. Can you grab the, uh, the Chardonnay from out of the fridge? Chardonnay? I was thinking something red. You have red with pork. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sarah, what wine pairs best with pork chops? Hello, pizza. Do you have your phone set to an Australian accent? Maybe. Well, apples are light, so, so white. Oh, yeah, well, full body cab pairs best with red. You like that, don't yes. you? Yes. Getting those red. Oh. Blood cells flowing. Yes, they're flowing, baby. They are flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God! Are you smoking? Think I could get a hit? Steve, come on, man. How about that 250 on me? <laughs> very good, very good. Um, but yeah, so 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 that was the that that was the second installment in uh, what we call the Candace and Peter uh, trilogy, and you can see you know some of those films on uh, Kelly Perrine. Dot com. But that's just yet, yet another example of create. I just try to create, create, create. Get so, out there, get out uh, there. You know, get true, out there. Is eventually. it true that the, uh, uh, the next clip, too, uh, with uh, uh, the hot date clip, uh, it, it won awards? Uh, it won uh, uh, Golden Time? Well, yeah. You know what? You know, we, 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 we've been lucky that a number a number of our short films have, yeah, because you've been nominated have won awards for either... Yeah. Well, you know, you know, we we enjoy we enjoy the uh, the festival circuit, and you know that's a whole other section that I can talk about some other time. But but again, I believe it's uh, important as an artist to get your work out there. If you're a painter, you better find a gallery where you can show your work. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a musician, you better find some place where you can play music and have an audience and uh, and rock out. Um, we're we're actors, writer, producers, so. Um, either streaming platforms or festivals, uh, that type of thing. And we also use these films as, as proof of concepts for motion pictures and for television shows. And so if you get them to festivals and do all that and you do well, it, yeah. it kind of, you know, validates the fact that, you know, you're, you're kind of halfway decent at, uh, at what you're doing. So, you know, to say that some of these films have won awards, that's, it, it's, 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 we're so honored. But again, you know, that's a, just a byproduct of doing what you love and throwing it up against the wall, you know. Uh, Tangerine has uh, chimed in. Uh, she's saying that uh, that was a great trailer uh, that she saw. <laughs> <laughs> she liked we're going to get, get Tangerine in our series uh, oh. when we go to series. Yeah. To All right. Good. She's, go. she's great. I, she, I saw her on Here's the Thing. And, uh, it, it, oh, well, you know what? Again, funny. that's that's that's. Tangerine is another example of somebody who is not going to let any, you know, moss grow under her feet. She's right. she's so out there. She's doing her yeah. thing. She's producing. She's her, well, yeah. but but again, it's just it's 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 a work ethic. It's somebody who goes, you know what? I'm just going to put in my time and put in my work. Mm -hmm. And there's there's no there's really no secret to it. I I know people think that Hollywood has rules and laws all all its own, but I'm I'm here to tell you that there are some through lines and some rules and some work ethic, uh, you know, I was looking for the perfect word, but just you. work ethic, uh, <laughs> you, you know, that you just, you just, you just, you know, you just have to do the work, man. I was trying to you find put the time in and, and good you things know, come to out wrap of it, it up you know? and say, sure. tie it in, but, but work, man, hard work is the best kept secret in Hollywood. Yep. And there's there's no secret sauce. There's no magic wand. It's that if this which is what you love, come come at come at it. And that's and that's the same for whatever other industry you're in. Whatever. I'm not. I'm I'm not special. I've just decided <laughs> to put in my time. All right. Let's take a look at uh, <laughs> reservation for three. Cool. Oh, oh, that's delicious. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's delicious. Like the balsamic and the olive like dancing together. Mm. That is so good. That, oh, that's really good. Do you know what you'd like? Mm. I think I'd like a baby. <coughs> mm. 
Do you need another minute to decide? Dude, she just sprung it on me. Your entrees, do you know what you'd like? Oh. <coughs> um, give me a, yeah, well, no, give me a, I'll give you another minute. Uh, are you, um? Vodka, vodka, vodka. I wouldn't be drinking if I was pregnant. Peter, I really think I want a child. I'm 34. <laughs> um, your profile said you were 31. I know. I know, I'm almost 35. But I want a baby. Or I think I want a baby. I, I mean, I do want a baby. I think. Or, or, or today I want a baby. I, I don't know. I... Okay, um, what do you want me to do? What? Is there something that you would like me to do right here? Right now, on the table? <laughs> Look, I just need you to know my real age, so you know. Uh, well, you just told me. I know, but see, let me tell you this little story. I watched this thing all about this woman who lied about her age. She lied to her boyfriend for like eight years. He proposed, and <laughs> right before they got married, she told him her real age. And he was actually pretty cool with it. Yeah, he probably already knew. I mean, he wasn't even mad that she lied, but <laughs> let's just say it caused some complications. His entire family thought she was one age for like eight years. They couldn't all of a sudden disclose it or everyone would have felt betrayed. So now they have to keep her fake age going. I don't want that. <laughs> okay, well, um, his family probably already knew. I mean, she's the one tripping. I mean, he just went along with it because he loves her. What? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew how old you were. How? Um, people Google people. <laughs> really? <laughs> you Googled me? Oh, well, I've done more than that to you. <laughs> Remember after we saw Fifty Shades when I, uh, uh. <laughs> <you up? laughs> Well, you know, I just, you know, didn't want to say anything because I knew it bothered you. Bothered me? Well, why would you think it would bother me? Why would you think that? Is there something wrong with the way I look? No, 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 not, not, not at all. I just thought, yeah, the age, it, the age thing. Whenever anybody comes in and asks for the best bottle of champagne, I always bring out the Dom Perignon. Not because it's the best, because it's the most expensive. I live on tips, you know. But what I brought you here is from the Laura Mar Vineyard in Temecula. It's what my wife and I drink every year on our anniversary. And I hope you will enjoy it. for years to come. <laughs> that was good, man. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I miss, I miss, I miss women. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to see another one. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, we're, we're all here. Pandemic is killing me. It's killing me. It's killing me. <laughs> It's gonna be okay. What were we man. talking about? What were we talking about? I'm sorry. Did I um, how, come off of that clip she, hot? She, I apologize. She, <laughs> she's she's very good. She's very good. Uh, no. no, she's fantastic. She's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Very uh, improv. That's that's what I like. That's what I like about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I tell you, uh, Kelly. Uh, I, you you got it all going on. What what what's what's coming up? Is there anything that's um, I don't know. Uh, I know that you know what we're in right now. But how is Hollywood? What what's what's Hollywood doing right now? Well, you you you, you know what it is. I live here and I get the L.A. Times. I'm I'm old school, so I still get the paper. Like I like to, I like to like to hold on to the paper and I hold it up and do it and. Do 
do that. I like to do my Sudoku and hold the paper, go to the bathroom with it. I'm old school. Uh, and so from what I'm reading, it, it, Hollywood it has to figure out how to open up safely like like everything else. We Again, we have no we have no magic pills. We have no uh, magic red carpets. You know, we can do so many things in CGI, except uh, you know, find a cure for this disease. We that that we can't do. So we are at the mercy, of, like everybody else, of um, hopefully science, a vaccine, right. people you know wearing masks, and people you know looking out for each other, and people kind of you know doing what we can to get through this as as, as quickly as I mean, possible for, for, um for i really that, that have been focused busy. on yeah for a person i love to keep busy like yourself this has got to be killing you man i mean i know it's killing me well you, you, <laughs> you know what again it, you, i i i find uh, i'm finding i'm finding other and different ways to stay busy yes. and that um i you know again old school i was gonna say i have a i have a rolodex of people i have you know folks that i really haven't gotten in contact with in a good long time that i can go through and get in contact with and say, how are you doing? I've written a couple of different scripts and a couple of different projects that are gonna be good to go on the other side of this. Right. I'm doing something on my Facebook page, at, you know, Kelly Perrine on Facebook. Uh, and I'm also putting it up on my uh, Instagram page, which is um, at Kelly Perrine. Oh, you froze up a little bit over there. Can you hear me? Kelly, can you hear me? Uh, you're frozen, <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> uh, Kelly, can you hear me? Oh, Kelly is frozen. He is, uh, he is frozen. Um, well, uh, Kelly, if you can hear me, um, I think, um, I got the gist of what you were saying and, uh, that, that's, that's amazing, uh, that, you know, um, Yep, he's still frozen. Um, so let me tell you, um, I really enjoyed, um, you know, having you on tonight. And uh, and I'll tell you, you uh, you really, um, I'll tell you, you stepped up tonight and coming on and uh, telling your your story and talking about your career. What a what a great career uh, you're having, and hopefully, uh, with uh, what what's going on in the world today. We can get back to, um, you know, uh, what we love doing, um, you know, uh, for sure. So um, and thanks again, Kelly, for, for coming on. Um, so Sunday show, uh, we're going to have uh, Joe Delisio, uh, who is the wine director over at the world famous uh, River Cafe in New York. I uh, sp spent well over uh, 40 years there. Um, and uh, he's got a story to tell. He's an author of a book about wines. We're going to do a little, maybe some wine tasting on Sunday night. So stick around for, for that show. Uh, that's at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, on Sunday night. And that's all for tonight. And thank you, thank you again for, for tuning in. And good night, America.